Welcome to Midwest Sports Net. We continue to preview the 2022 college football season. Our stop today is in Spearfish, South Dakota, and we get to visit with the head football coach for the Black Hill State Yellow Jackets, Coach Josh Bresky, in his third year. Coach, 2021, your first full season at the helm there. Four and seven overall, and really two different parts to the season. I mean, you open the season four and one, and then the midpoint there come up against Colorado School of Mines, which, by the way, was a national semifinalist ultimately uh, over the course of the year. Uh, a stopping point, if you will, 0-6 from that point on. So 4-7 and seven overall. Can you take us through 2021? Yeah, it definitely was the tale of uh, two seasons, uh, two halves of the season. Uh, we had a great start to the year, started 4-1. and one. Uh, The singular loss we had in week three to start the year was a three-point loss to CSU Pueblo. Um, doing some history, a little bit of research on our matchup as we kind of prepared for that week. I saw the last three meetings with our school in Pueblo, we haven't played within 46 points of Pueblo. So coming out of a week three matchup uh, with the Thunderwolves, walking away, um, losing by three points, and having a really great opportunity to win the game at the end. Um, you know, you, you don't love moral victories, but we got on the bus and kind of looked around. And we're like, hey, we might have something special going this year. Uh, we might be we might be a little bit better than we thought we were. Um, and I told our guys, I wasn't surprised, and I keep telling them all the time, don't be surprised because our guys work extremely hard and we're being highly intentional about the process. And so, yeah, coming out of uh, week five, we're sitting four and one, feeling really good about ourselves. One of those wins was a double overtime win uh, here, at, uh, here at home at our homecoming game versus Adams State. Pretty incredible win, kind of a walk-off deal. Our quarterback ran in a, a QB draw from probably – 25 yards out to win the game. Pretty cool win. Uh, we host Colorado School of Mines in week six, and we're four and one. We played okay. We went into halftime down 20 to 14, and we got the ball to start the third quarter. Uh, we failed to score. Our defense got us the ball back. We failed to score again, and the rest was kind of history. Mines took off with it in Mines fashion, and unfortunately, the last play of that game, our quarterback got hurt, and so we went into week seven. Uh, with our number two and number three quarterback rotating. And uh, we just weren't the same. We just weren't the same after that. We began to lose confidence as well through the latter half of the season. And uh, it was just very obvious and apparent that, uh, you know, I, I guess our luster was starting to wear off in the second half of the year. So we've got to do a better job of of maintaining that confidence and that poise through the second half of the season this year. Well, coming off of that 4-7 and seven record, I know there, there are things, as you mentioned, to build on. So let's talk about uh, a good starting point, and that is Chance Eben. He does come back this season, and he had a good year uh, uh, off that one game, as you were talking about, following the injury, but pretty solid season. Had passed for 1,589 yards, rushed for 346 yards as well. Six foot three, 210, he's not a small boy. No, he's not. He's one of the most... Uh hardworking kids on the team. He prepares very, very well. He takes football serious, gets good grades. Um, you know, I'm very proud of Chance's progression. You know, he's a kid that when we took over, I think uh, he had been told in his career, you'll never be a college quarterback. You should change positions. And so um, he's got a little bit of a, of a fire behind him, a fire underneath him, you could say, to, to be a really good quarterback in this league. And um, the kid just prepares um, like a champion. So Extremely proud and happy to have him back. You know, we've got to continue to work um, to get him better. I'm surprised he only had, you know, 300 and so rushing yards because he runs quite a bit and he runs well. Um, but, yeah, you know, he single-handedly won us some games, and he knows that. Our team knows that. Uh, we also had some games where, you know, our passing attack just wasn't there and not solely ever on the quarterback. It's Of course, there's always protection issues and there's – you know, receivers got to be catching the ball and be in the right areas at the right time. But overall, you know, um, Chance is a great competitor. We love having him back. Um, we'll have Aiden Willard back in his senior year, our Oregon State transfer. Um, and those two will be competing through fall camp for that starting job. That should be fun to watch. Well, for, for whoever comes out of it, there will be a couple of uh, targets we know for sure that are coming back. Connor Boyd, Hassan Williams, among the leading receivers coming back to be a part of the Yellow Jacket receiving core for him or for whoever. Yeah, we have a pretty sure-handed group of receivers. They're all, um, they're all about the same size. They're all kind of that 5'10", <laughs> five, 5'11", five, five, you know, 190 to 200 pound guys, Jamin Wirtz, uh, Mitch McKibben, Connor Boyd, Hassan Williams. 
Uh, those guys kind of led the receiving core this last year. And so you'll see a lot of production out of those guys. Um, they're here. They're working out all summer, throwing with the quarterbacks multiple times throughout the week. And so, um, yeah, you can count, count on seeing their names flashing across the screen and having significant stats, uh, stats for us this upcoming year. So Hassan's kind of been, you know, the guy who's, you know, the most explosive guy in that group. Um, the guy that we asked to run post routes and run go routes for us, we decided to move him into the slot. And so uh, just more opportunities for him to catch some intermediate and some short routes. Um, he's very, very dangerous with the ball in his hand. So, uh, you know, for that position, those guys are getting fly sweeps. They're getting rocket toss. So Hassan should have some rushing yards behind his name as well this this coming year. And then we'll be counting on on Jamin Wirtz, uh, Mitch McKibben, and Connor Boyd to come back and have a better year than they had last year. Um, but those guys work extremely hard. Great. I'm really happy to have them back. We're visiting with Coach Josh Bresky from Black Hill State in his third year with the program, second full season here on Midwest Sports Net. And I encourage you, please like this video and subscribe to the channel. We just crossed 1,000 subscribers, so we're pushing for two now. And we would appreciate your subscription as we talk about small college sports and more throughout the Midwest and beyond right here with Coach Bresky. And, Coach, let's go to the defensive side of the ball. And one of the coolest stories – really, that I've seen uh, this year and, and last year, uh, the Cunoyes brothers who come from Arizona make their way up to South Dakota. And what a find you had right there. That's a great story. I'll let you tell a little bit more about that. But uh, just to say this, you already have a return on your investment, if nothing else. Doodles with 100 tackles to lead the team last year, seven breakups, a couple of forced fumbles as well. And these multi-sport athletes really, I think, are, are a big find for you. Absolutely. Uh, interesting kind of how we found uh, Nick and Doodles. We were looking at a quarterback at Cactus High. And Coach Ortiz kind of said, hey, I got these two twins, these brothers who are pretty talented, and we got to watching them. And, Joey, this had to have been like maybe my first week on the job. Uh, we just got to campus. It's the middle of winter. Hey, we got to put a recruiting class together. And so we, you know, made quick work of getting a hold of those guys. Um, extremely happy that we got Nick and Doodles. Um, you know, Nick did a great job for us this year. He kind of had a backup role as a safety. Um, but wow. I mean, just an incredible special teams player for us this last year. You know, if it wasn't for Jacob Parks being kind of our everything place kicker, kickoff punter guy, uh, Nick Quinones would have been our special teams player of the year without a doubt. I mean, he was just a force. He played on every unit and he played with his hair on fire. Uh, speaking of hair, you got doodles who's kind of got hair down <laughs> to the middle of his back. Um, the kid, uh, he just loves football. He just loves football. He's not afraid of anybody. I think when we played Pueblo um, in that tight game that we had with them, I want to say Doodles maybe had like 17 tackles that game. Um, he was just all over the place coming off the roof. He plays safety for us. Um, he just does a great job. He's the best tackler that we have on our football team. And, you know, he comes up to my armpit basically when him and I stand next to each other. But, you know, what an incredible story to see those guys kind of triumph over some of the adversity that they had and, you know, how blessed they are to have, to have found their foster parents and coach Ortiz pulled them into uh, football at cactus high uh, back in 2020, sorry, 2019. And so, uh, yeah, we're blessed to have those guys definitely blessed. And, and, and they're young still, you know, doodles and Nick both played in the COVID year in 2020, which didn't count. So this last year was technically their first year playing. They're both return as sophomores. You know, that's a thread, too. I mean, you, you bring back Aaron Teal, who is a young player for you as well. We talk about mm -hmm. what uh, uh, Doodles did from a safety position and, and Nick with, with his opportunities. But uh, Aaron is a linebacker, second on the team in tackles, had 79 of those. And, uh, you know, it seems like there is a youth movement there for you, and you could be strong for years to come. Yeah, and that was kind of the model when we first took over is, you know, do I want to build it to just a flip or do I want to build it to last? And uh, we may have talked about this last summer as well, Joey, but I plan on being here for a while. I love Black Hill State. I bleed green and gold being a former player myself. And, um, you know, I think the right way for me and, and my staff to do it is to build it for longevity, and, which means just recruiting more high school players. And so we are going to be extremely young with guys like Aaron Teal coming back as a sophomore, two leading tacklers or sophomores. And, uh, you know, we kind of said we could be good. We could be really, really good next year, or we could be good every year a few years from now when we first got started. Um, and that's kind of the model that we've taken on. And, you know, hopefully it produces fruit in these upcoming seasons. 
hopefully it produces fruit this season. You know, um, there's no reason that we can't be extremely good this year, um, a lot better than we were this past season. And, you know, we play tight games with Pueblo and Mines, at least Mines for a half. I think it sends a message to our guys that we're doing something right. You know, the teams we really got to get over the hump are, you know, those those next tier teams that we kind of have mental blocks with, the Mesas, the Shadrons, the Westerns. Um, but it's a great league. You know, it's an honor to play in this league. And um, you got to have your have your P's and Q's in order and, and be prepared for the season if you want to make a run and make playoffs. Well, let's talk about that season then. It opens up on a Thursday night against Dickinson State once again, September 1st, and you're on the road taking on Dickinson State, the Blue Hawks. And then after that, your home opener will be on September 10th, and that's going to be against William Jewell. So you get the uh, the second of two games against the Cardinals there. The RMAC schedule starts against Shadron. Now, you mentioned Shadron just a, a moment ago, ended the season with uh, Shadron last year, and uh, you're going to be taking them on on the road. That's the third week of the season. So that's how things open up for you all. Can you take us through it? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Dickinson State, we're finishing a two-year contract with them. We'll open up at their place. Um, I haven't been up there since I was a coach at Black Hills, my first year coaching back in 2010. Uh, but they have a beautiful stadium. They'll draw a nice crowd for an evening game there. Um, and they gave us a great fight this last year. It actually came down to a pretty close game at the end. Uh, this past season. So uh, I'd like to not have it be as close as it was this last year, but um, I know that Pete Stanton's going to have those guys ready to play. Uh, William Jewell comes to us this year. Thank goodness. You don't have to drive out to Kansas city again this year. Um, although our guys did enjoy going to Chick-fil-A and, and doing all that good stuff. But um, William Jewell comes to us to finish a two year contract uh, starting our Mac play in week three with Shadron. And basically the way, you know, our conference works is, um, if you finish with Shadron, you start with Shadron. So our conference schedule just flips the following year. And so all the teams that we most recently saw at the end of uh, 2021, we'll see at the beginning of 2022. And, oh, man, we faded uh, we faded off pretty hard into, into, uh, into the mist at the end of the season with uh, just our, our performance, you know, on Saturdays. And so it will be nice to play Shadron and Mesa and Mines, hopefully with all of our horses, you know, with a full – full tank of gas and, uh, you know, hopefully a good head on our shoulders. Oh, that was the big thing. You know, we can, we can cite injuries and, uh, you know, circumstances and things out of our control. But the one thing that we could control last year going into week 10 and week 11 was, you know, our, our attitude and our effort. And I just, I think it was really poor and we're going to have to really work on that and continue to work on that. If we want to be, you know, at the end of the year, you know, in the conversation for, you know, playoffs and conference championships. And really that's my ultimate goal here as, as the head coach is I, I want to, I want to earn my guys a, a conference title. I want to put, put a conference championship ring on their finger. You know, we, we play the game because it's fun, but you know, one of the funnest parts is winning. And I want to teach these guys, you know, that they can have success through being, being intentional and professional about the way they go about preparing and, I think we're learning that. We're learning it slowly, but we're learning it surely. Well, Coach, I appreciate the way you're going about it. I like the the idea of going about it for the long term and, and the fact that you want to have longevity there as well. So success then to you all, to the Yellow Jackets this season. And I really appreciate you taking some time with us here on the Summit to preview the 22 college football season. We will be following you. And I have one last question to ask. Okay. With, with what you said in mind, is there not a Chick-fil-A in Spearfish? You know, the closest Chick-fil-A is probably going to be in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. So, okay. you know, it's tough. It's tough out here sometimes. We've got some good restaurants, but no Chick-fil-A. It's tough. <laughs> no Casey's Pizza either. That's the other okay. one. Okay, all right. There, there, we'll, we'll have to talk about a few of those things and, and see what the scheduling looks like in, in upcoming <laughs> years. Coach Josh Bresky here with us today on the Summit as we preview the college football season for 2022. Thanks, Coach, for being on. Thank you, Joey.